Looking back on our photography is actually one of the most powerful ways to spot patterns, learn and improve. Each year at the end of the year, I like to try and narrow down all the photos I've taken that year to five standout ones or favorite photos of the entire year. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this one, I'm gonna be breaking down my personal five favorite images of 2023. I know the year's not quite over yet, but with the holiday season coming up and all the crazy business that that brings, I probably won't be doing that much shooting through December. So I'm pretty happy with the five that I've selected this year. I have noticed a trend with my favorite work this year and they're all present in these five photos that I'm gonna to show today. So see if you can spot it before the end of the video. It's pretty obvious, so I'll be surprised if you don't. All right, so shot number one here, we've got this lovely coastal scene, Dunstanborough Castle up there in the background. This is Embleton Bay, the beach here. And of course, we've got this guy down here walking along the beach. By the way, these are in no particular order. However, I am saving my favorite from the year till last, but these first four, no particular order. So a crucial thing in this image that I really like is the fact that this guy is positioned sort of at the beginning of the frame here and you see how far he's got to walk on his journey. If he was stood over here somewhere, it wouldn't seem as balanced in the frame. It wouldn't feel as good of a story either because obviously this shot is showing this guy and how far he's walking and how far he's got to go around that lovely bend of sun there. Another small detail, but quite a crucial one, I think, is the fact that, I'll just zoom into this guy on the beach down here, his arms and legs are in that sort of walking motion position, which helps to add the sense of him moving along the beach and the sense of motion in the frame even though it is a still image you get that sense of him moving which helps a lot sometimes when you have a shot and the person's walking along the beach but you can't see that movement in their legs and their arms it does look a little bit static as if they're just sort of stood on the beach rather than moving along so of course if you're taking a shot like this make sure you fire a few off so that you do get that optimal position of the person there's also obviously a very nice dark contrast in the silhouette to the brightness and color of the sand and the sea which helps him stand out a lot on the beach he's not blending in probably quite lucky that he was wearing such dark clothes on that day but that helps the image overall and then one last note as well when it came to post-processing obviously i could have made this sky ridiculously moody and overcast and rainy to give it that crazy moody look that a lot of people do like but oftentimes i feel like people make their skies a little bit too moody which draws way too much interest to the sky and kind of takes away from the image as a whole frame so i've tried to keep the sort of grayness and moodiness of that sky quite minimal in post it's pretty much true to what it looked like on the day as well so that always helps to remember the scene correctly and portray somewhere properly of how it actually looked okay so moving on to shot number two for this video and this scene is kind of similar in the sense that we've got a castle and a person but obviously there's a lot more going on in this one so straight away you've got the hut here lovely subject and Bambra Castle up there looming in the distance two very strong subjects and then again we've got this guy instead of walking this time he's kind of stood admiring the view so what I think this gives because we've got the hut the castle and the guy is really good sort of subject hierarchy we've got three different size objects that can all be kind of classed as the subject. It's kind of up to the viewer to decide what they think the main subject is in the image. But I think they balance each other out because we've got sort of a very large one in the background, medium one with the hut, and then a very small guy. And they're all sort of three points that make this almost triangle together. And I think that works really nicely. I mean, it is a bit subjective, I kind of made that up in my head, but subject hierarchy is a real thing. And you do want one subject to be more powerful than the other, so you can move between them with your eye. So I think those three elements work really nice together. And we've also got a beautiful lead in line with this mud sort of track that goes here, all the way up to there that sort of meets the main, main subject of the image the hut there. All right, so we're gonna go from two very coastal landscapey scenes now to a city scene or a street scene, however you'd like to perceive it. And we've got, again, this guy sort of crossing the road, this triangular light here, which is really nicely falling on his path that he's walking. Straight away, I'm just gonna say, I would love to have been able to capture this guy dead bang in the middle of this garage in the background. But as I was photographing it, shortly after this shot, a van flew past. So this was like my last burst, if you will, before the shot was gone and, I, and he came out into the shadow and I couldn't capture any more of him. So I do like random 
graffiti on either side here, which is kind of nice because you got it on both poles. If it was only on one pole, I would probably be like, that's a bit annoying. But I do like how it kind of lines up nicely like that. Even with the guy's head, the two graffitis kind of line up on either side, which is quite nice. And then again, if he was dead bang in the middle of that garage, it would have been even better. But one thing that I thought was really nice about this image, and again, this is like diving deep into photos and sort of analyzing them properly. But I like the fact that he's carrying what looks like to be some instruments down there but then also his phone in his hand, which is kind of like a contrast between like, not necessarily old school, new school, but it's like learning instruments and then these electronic devices that we carry around and we can't put away. So I kind of like that sort of mismatch um, of items that he's carrying there. Overall, I think it's just one of those really nice morning commute images. The guy's obviously on his way somewhere, college, school, work, I'm not sure, but he's obviously heading somewhere and it's that nice morning portrayal of the commute and life happening around the city. All right, we're jumping back over to the coast for this next shot, but this time less beachy and more sort of coastal life and coffee culture and what have you. So when I initially shot this image, this was actually part of a 15 photos, one location video. I'll link it in the description or something if you wanna go and check out the behind the scenes of this image. But when I initially shot it and I got it back and I edited it as well, not only did I think this was one of my favorite photos of the year, but I loved it so much. I actually thought it might've been one of my favorite photos I've ever taken, but as time's gone on and I've looked back on it and looking back on it now as well, I'm not sure about favorite I've ever taken. I still love it, but that's why I've put it fourth in this video. One thing I do really, really like about this image is although there's a lot of people present in the photo, they're all quite nicely spaced out and they all seem to be sort of doing their own thing. This guy's kind of stood, just chilling. This woman's walking along and then he's on the left there, he's sort of looking in his backpack. And then we've got another lady there that's walking along as well. And then further on, we've got some people actually sat having a drink and stuff. And then even inside the window of the cafe there, we've got some people hanging out in there, which I like. So it's one of them images, the more you look around it, the more you see, the more you can pick out from it, which I do like that there's a lot going on. So in terms of framing for this image, I shot a few different ones while I was here. And this one came out my favorite for the fact that you've got this straight line along here and then the curvature of the building that goes round as well. So I've got some versions of this image where you can't really see this curvature and the windows and stuff. And this one sort of bringing you round the corner almost, I think works so much better than the other ones where it was just a flat edge. And then one last key thing that I focused on when I was actually out framing this image up, I framed the edge of this wall here to be almost exactly at the halfway point of the frame. So we've almost got like, not necessarily negative space, but very sort of blank, especially with the sky on the left hand side and then very, very full um, where the building is there, which balances the image really, really nicely. So that's a great thing you can look out for when you're taking photos. If you've got something like a building or something that's there's so much going on, you can then sort of frame the other half of the image to be the opposite of that and you get this nice, sort of full empty composition, which I always think works really well. All right, let's jump into this last image, number five and my personal favorite of 2023 that I've taken. It was in Lake Como. And I think the reason I love this so much is because it is the perfect combination of beautiful, beautiful landscape. All along here, you've got all these mountains and of course, beautiful lake in the front, but yet still being quite emotive and telling quite a nice, sort of cryptic story with this girl that sat in the frame down there so it's combining not only beautiful landscape but also people enjoying nature people interacting with the landscapes the girl in the frame that sat with her legs crossed drinks bottle there on her phone she looks like she might be sat in deep conversation maybe texting somebody maybe friends family maybe even just scrolling the internet and these are the things that i love when you capture someone out in such a beautiful landscape on their phone again like the guy in the city shot you get this juxtaposition of beautiful beautiful wilderness and then somebody on these devices that we all carry looking at the photo it asks like quite a lot of questions is this somebody that comes and sits here often are they on holiday who are they texting what are they doing on their phone in terms of where she's located in the image i don't particularly hate the fact that this pole is coming straight down 
into the girl. I don't think that ruins the image in any way, but I would have liked to have shot a version of the image where she was sat in between the two poles because I think that would have made some really, really cool framing within the image. But unfortunately, of course, again, that's where she was sat. She didn't move around at all, and I wasn't gonna wait around for hours to see if someone did sit there and this was just the perfect opportunity to take this photo so that's what we got on the day but like i say if she was in the middle there that would have been some really cool framing i'm a big big fan of the fact that there's nothing on the water at all we've got this town in the distance in the hills and the houses running along and stuff that you can see sort of either side of the frame but there's nothing on the water there's no boats or anything and that doesn't alleviate any focus from the girl that sat there. She's just nicely positioned in the front of the frame and then it's almost like everything behind her is the epic landscape, which is exactly how I wanted to shoot this image. Okay, so if you didn't spot the reoccurring theme throughout all of these images, I'll be surprised, but it's obviously that they all contain a person in some way or another, whether they're off in the distance as a silhouette or whether they're the main subject of the photograph themselves. Whether that's helping to show sort of the journey that somebody's taken through the photograph, like in this one, or whether it's helping to show the scale of the other subjects around a person. This is what jumped out to me and I spotted the most, not just in these five photos, I had hundreds of images that were including people in some way or another over and over again. I think it just really Really helps to create this sense of story for the viewer where they can then go off and perceive it how they want and of course the photographer can have their own perception of it as well. The other great thing about this and not to say it's 100% foolproof but let's take this shot here of the guy walking through the city for example. Another photographer could come and stand in that exact position take the exact same photo but they're never going to catch that exact same guy. The light's never going to be the same. They might be able to take that photo with another person walking through and nice light and stuff, but it's never really going to be exactly recreated. Which when there's so many people out there now practicing photography, whether that's with just their iPhone or a professional camera or something in between, finding these little pockets and stuff that you can do to make your work somewhat unique is super powerful, I think. Right, I could go on and on and on, but before this video goes on for about an hour, or I bore you to sleep. Hopefully this was of some value to you. Hopefully it's inspired you to look back on your images at the end of the year, every year, and try and pick up on patterns. Because like I said, at the start of the video, it is one of the most underrated and powerful ways that you can improve your own work by picking up things that you like, that you've done throughout the year, and then carrying that into the new year. And you never know, this might be the way that you find your own unique style as well. Having said all that though, Appreciate you watching. Hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.